Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm coming at you with a big haul. A big haul. <laughs> One of the things I really like about booktube is that like there's so much like variety in the videos you can get and I know some of my favourite people to watch are very kind of not anti-haul but it's just something they don't do a lot of on their channel. But then you also get people who have a problem with buying books and I'm very much one of those people. I don't need to justify myself but if I was going to I would say I have nothing else to spend my money on apart from like furnishing my home which is sort of done now. I can't go on holiday, can't even meet my mates in the pub and therefore I'm pouring all my money into buying books. And as someone who used to have a moderate to severe clothes buying addiction, this feels like a much more productive use of my time and money. So if you've been watching my videos this year, you'll know that I am on kind of a mission to diversify my reading. It's kind of a bit of a strange word, but just read more books from specifically non-white authors, any sort of marginalised group or voice, but really specifically in terms of what I've been reading, I've been trying to read a lot more from authors who are of a different race or culture to my own. So this haul is exactly that. This haul is all non-white authors and it's predominantly black authors. Um, October in the UK is Black History Month and whilst that doesn't mean that we should only be talking about black authors or only be reading black authors in October. That's certainly not true and that isn't what I have been doing this year. It felt like a nice time to kind of celebrate some black authors that I'm really excited to read from or who I've already read before and there's some more titles from them in here. All that to say, that's what this haul's going to be and I hope you enjoy. I'm just going to pick them in a random order. First, we have A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Big old, big old book here. Um, this book won the Booker Prize in 2015 and it's kind of been on my radar since then. I've been wanting to read it, but it's a little bit intimidating because it is so big. I have read, so Marlon James's newer book, uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, which is a fantasy book. I have read some of, I had it on audio, but that wasn't really working for me. And then I had a physical copy that I was going to read, but then it got left at work um, in March and I haven't been able to go back into the office since then. But I am very excited about this. This is kind of about the attempted assassination on Bob Marley, but I think that is a kind of slightly more minor plot point or like Bob Marley himself isn't like a major character in here. It's really about the sort of political situation in Jamaica at the time. It says it spans three decades and several continents. And I think you look from a lot of different people's perspective to kind of make up this story. And yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I think I'll really like it keen to have eventually got my hands on this one. Next up we have Gingerbread by Helen Oyemi. I absolutely love this cover. So I read Boy Snowbird by Helen Oyemi earlier this year and I really loved her writing style. Like immediately I was like, okay, I'm obsessed with this. I thought this was going to be like one of my new favourite books ever. I didn't like the ending, which I think is quite common if you've read that book or if you've heard people talk about it. It's not really the best ending and it did some kind of weird things, but that aside it really made me want to read more from her because I love her writing style she writes very kind of ethereal almost like mystical book so Boy Snow Bird is a loose Snow White retelling this is a loose interpretation of the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale I didn't really know which Helen Oyemi I wanted to read next and um, I had White is for Witching on my list as well but then I saw this and I thought yeah let's read this so you're following a girl and her mother and her mother kind of claims to come from this magical place and her daughter kind of knows this about her and it's sort of accepted she kind of very deftly I find I found in Boy Snow Bird like weaves that kind of more fantastical stuff just in with very real stories so I think this is going to be a lot of the same kind of unexplained kind of fabulous look at this place that her mother comes from and it says it's influenced by the mysterious place gingerbread holds in classic children's stories equal parts wholesome and uncanny so yeah i'm very excited to see kind of what this book does and like i say just love her writing style next up i have 26a by diana evans i read ordinary people by diana evans last month and i absolutely loved it i was actually kind of surprised by how much i loved it and again it was her writing style she wrote such kind of raw painful human emotions in a really understated really lyrical way 
and so it made me immediately want to read her first novel which is 26a i don't think the cover of this is particularly nice to be honest um, and i bet now that i've bought it they'll like reissue it in the same vein of ordinary people and i'll be annoyed but i was really desperate to read it so this is the story of identical twins who live in london so they're mixed race it says their mother's from nigeria their father's from derbyshire and they're it's kind of about them carving their own identity kind of as a mixed as mixed race girls and also about the different directions that the twins go in. I'm kind of obsessed with reading about twins. There's another twin book in here. And yeah, I just think I'll really like this. I've actually heard as well that this book has, so Ordinary People has a kind of fantastical element. It's very, it's very subtle and it is kind of incongruous that some people struggled with it, but I really love that. And I've heard that this book does a very similar thing. So I'm extremely excited to get to this one, as I'm going to say about them all. Next, we have a thriller, a very highly anticipated thriller, which is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Again, absolutely stunning cover. And this, I think Alyssa Cole is a award-winning author, but this is her first thriller book that she's written and it's basically about a woman who lives in Brooklyn and the neighborhood is becoming slowly and then quickly more and more gentrified and all the other black people that she were in her community are kind of not there anymore she kind of thinks oh all her old neighbors like moved to the suburbs moved away and then she starts to realize or theorize that maybe actually something darker has been happening to these people who used to live in her neighborhood and aren't there anymore so this sounds extremely eerie um like i say i love a thriller and yeah i think the ideas of kind of gentrification and it being set in brooklyn i think i'm gonna really like this next up something a bit different for me and that is kindred by octavia e butler so i don't really read like very much fantasy or like sci-fi and this is for all intents and purposes a time travel book often that might put me off but something about this really interests me and i actually do kind of like with ordinary people quite like books where there's just like an aspect of it but it's not what's gonna like drive the plot or in my like taste opinion like drive the plot down like i don't like being confronted with a lot of like science fiction like the maths of tra time travel type things and i don't think that this book's going to do that you're following a woman called dana in 19 in the 1970s and basically she gets transported back to the antebellum south in um, 1815 where she's assumed to be a slave and she's been sent back in time to save a white man who is in some way linked to her lineage um and basically she has to save him to save herself so obviously there is that time travel aspect, but it really sounds like more so it's going to be about slavery, that particular time in American history, and a lot of kind of moral dilemmas, like that idea of, you know, you have to save someone so that you exist, but I'm assuming he might not necessarily be a very nice person. So I think this is going to bring up a lot of interesting ideas. We will see. Next, another beloved author of mine, who I am slowly but surely working the way through the back catalogue of, and that is Zadie Smith. So this is NW. I am obsessed with Zadie Smith. I absolutely love her writing. I've read White Teeth, but years ago, I really need to do a reread. And I've read Swing Time and On Beauty this year, both of which I've absolutely loved. Some of my favorite books of the year. So basically, I just can't get enough Zadie Smith. This might actually be the last of her novels that I haven't read. She's got a short story collection and like an essay collection. I could be wrong, but this is, um, it says it's like a tragic comedy, which is definitely how I think you could view on beauty as, which I absolutely loved. Um, and this follows four Londoners after they've left their childhood council estate and moved on to different lives. It says it's like a, a portrait of modern urban life, which I think is something that Zadie Smith does so, so well. She always kind of trots around the globe in her books, which I also love, like they're quite sprawling. But Swing Time was very London-based, on beauty less so, it was a bit more American. And yeah, I'm excited to get back to the London of Zadie Smith and I like the idea of following like a group of people tragic comedy sounds brilliant so yeah I'm super excited to get to this one next up I have The Majesties by Tiffany Tsao so Tiffany Tsao is a Chinese Indonesian author as far as I know and this book sounds amazing I heard about it on Jean from Jean Bookish Thoughts channel and she loved it and it just sounded so good it's kind of like a literary thriller which it's one of my favourite things um, and it's about a very like rich elite family. Our main character is in a coma at the start of the book and you know that her sister has put her in the coma and I think all of their family and she is sort of trying to think why while she's in this coma, thinking back over the recent past and their life and what might have sparked that and I think it's full of a lot of like secrets, family secrets, again one of my favourite things, some like toxic behaviour, 
this like darkly rich family this cover is really cool it has like butterflies on and yeah i'm like extremely keen to get to this one i think it'll be a pretty fast read and i'm very much in the mood for something that's going to be kind of twisty and turny and surprise me and i'm hoping that's what this will be then i picked up and um, if beale street could talk by james baldwin i really wanted to read some james baldwin i should say by the way all of these books are fiction just because i've realized that i prefer to read my non-fiction via audio so obviously james baldwin wrote the fire next time which is a non-fiction book about um civil rights that i really really want to read and he's also written fiction i initially thought i wanted to read giovanni's room first and i definitely do still want to read giovanni's room but this was so cheap like i got this in such a good deal so i got this one instead this one's set in harlem and the narrator of the novel is a 19 year old girl who gets pregnant man who got her pregnant her boyfriend is in prison for rape um, and it says it kind of looks back at their love affair how the families are kind of trying to bring her boyfriend funny to justice like how they're trying to get him out of prison it's pretty short but i've heard such amazing things about james baldwin's writing he's such a like classic author that i really want to read from him and this seems like a really good place to start i yeah, am interested to see what happens in this book and it with this young female narrator i think that's going to be really interesting so there's that one next up the underground railroad by colson whitehead i read nickel boys last month and i absolutely loved it one of my favorite books of the year 100 percent. i'll be so shocked if it doesn't get onto my top 10 and this is his first novel so the nickel boys won the pulitzer this year and the underground railroad also won the pulitzer when it came out in 2017 so like that's pretty gosh darn impressive and this follows a girl called cora who's a slave in georgia and it's about her trying to escape slavery um via this underground railroad and her slave owner basically trying to catch up with her so yeah it sounds very heavy but i very much trust colson whitehead now like the nickel boys was very heavy that dealt with some deeply disturbing things but he did it in such a like pitch perfect way it was not gratuitous but it was really moving so yeah i'm can't wait really to jump back into more colson whitehead this is obviously like more of a historical novel i guess the nickel boys was historical as well it was like the 1960s and um, this is obviously a bit earlier and i'm not usually one who likes i've mentioned this a few times like travel books or like journey books often don't do well for me but 100 percent making an exception for this and i feel like that won't put me off i just honestly was so so impressed by colson whitehead's the nickel boys can't wait to read this next again a little bit different in terms of what i usually read um because it's a short story collection it's a lot by brian washington i've mentioned many a time on this channel that i don't love short story collections i just find i never reach for them i'm always more likely to just pick up a novel however i do want to get more into them i've read a couple of more recently and i think my like perfect short stories are quite like banal everyday short stories about like normal people's lives but that manage to like cut to the core of some sort of integral human emotion or really like capture a quiet but beautiful moment in life and i heard part of one of these short stories being read out in a podcast that i was listening to and it was about a man meeting his boyfriend's mother and it was just a short extract but for whatever reason i really connected with it i thought oh my god i'm really gonna get on with the writing style here i also think these stories might be interconnected like from reading the blurb i don't even think it sounds like short stories but i'm pretty sure that it is maybe i'm totally wrong and i've just been waffling about short stories pointlessly um but you're following like an apartment block it says the son of a black mother and a latino father is coming of age and then it says around him his friends and neighbors experience the tumult the tumult of living in the margins and it's their stories so i think they're going to kind of be interconnected short stories which again is like my favorite thing like novels that are made up of interconnected stories but are still a novel or like short stories that are connected i really love because i don't feel that like jarringness from moving from one to the other but you get like i say those like close looks on one person's situation so i'm super super excited to read this and um, it's also been blurbed by Max Porter, who wrote Lanny, which is one of my favourite books that I read last year. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited about that. Then I have Pet by Akweke Amezi. So it will come to, as no surprise if you've watched any of my recent videos that I have this year discovered and become obsessed with Akweke Amezi. Freshwater by them is one of the best books I've read this year, 100%. I absolutely love it. I also then read The Death of Vivek Oji, which I also loved. I'm just desperate to read anything that Akweke Mezi has ever written. And Pet is their YA novel, so I don't read YA ever, basically. 
but again would obviously make an exception for a Quake great cover and it's kind of like a um bit of a like fantastical sci-fi YA which again like very out of my comfort zone um but it says there are no monsters anymore or so the children in the city of Lucille have been taught Jam and her best friend Redemption have grown up with this lesson all their lives but when Jam meets Pet she begins to question what she's been told so I think Pet is this sort of like monster figure and I imagine it's going to look into identity that's like a huge topic in Akweke Mezzi's work. Akweke Mezzi is a non-binary author and Freshwater and Vivek Oji both look at the trans experience or the non-binary experience and I think it's great that they're writing what I imagine is similar themes for YA genre. I think that's something a lot of teenagers probably really need and yeah I'm just I love their writing so much and I'm really excited to see how that looks in a YA form rather than adult. Then I have Sing and Very Sing by Jasmine Ward. So I haven't read any novels of Jasmine Ward's. However, I read her memoir, Men We Reaped, earlier this year, and I thought it was amazing. Such an affecting, powerful memoir that looked at five men in her life, five young black men who have died in a variety of different circumstances, but looking at their lives, their deaths, and how that plays into the wider the wider issues facing young black men in America. But yeah, it was such a brilliant memoir. It was political, it was personal, and so powerful it really read like a novel it made me cry it's one of like the only few books that made me cry this year and i've heard amazing things about her novels so i'm extremely excited to get started i mean this is blurred by like marlon james celeste ng john mcgregor all authors who i absolutely adore again this is like a bit of a road trip novel um so you know look at me just pushing out my comfort zone with ya we've got sci-fi we've got road trips um and it's like very much a family portrait i think the back's not giving me too much about the plot um i do i have definitely heard what the plot of this book is before there's one i think where a family are traveling to a prison because one of their family members is in prison but that might be her other one i'm not 100 percent sure anyway i don't like knowing too much about the plot anyway and yeah i'm so sold on her writing style it was so imaginative and evocative when she was writing non-fiction that i'm just desperate to see what she's going to do with a novel like i know i'm saying i'm so excited to read all of these books but that's why i bought them only a few left next we have stay with me by ayobami adebayo this is like a really famous book I think like I, I've heard about it for years obviously I had not read it and um it's set in Nigeria and I've really been enjoying reading a lot of Nigerian fiction this year actually so Adichie um Amezi I'm reading Things Fall Apart by Chinua Chebi at the minute and yeah I'm finding it fascinating a country that I was before this year extremely unfamiliar with now reading like a range of literature within that country is really interesting in seeing the kind of similar themes or similar political things or mythology that i'm just really enjoying that however i would love to continue to read from other countries within the african diaspora so please do leave any recommendations below anyway back to this um this is about a woman who is hoping for a child she's trying to get pregnant it's set against the like political turbulence of nigeria in the 1980s and yeah it sounds like it's just gonna be very like emotional kind of family identity story as someone who is terrified of children, I have really been enjoying reading books about motherhood this year. It's, I think it's just such a, so much depth to explore in that topic. And it's such a personal thing for each individual that, yeah, I've just been finding it really interesting to read about different people's experience of motherhood. So very keen to get to this one. I'm keen to get to them all. I'm actually like so excited, like looking at that pile, I'm like, I'm going to have such a good reading rest of the year. I put like all my unread books on one bookshelf and my boyfriend was like please make these last like we, we've got no more we've got nowhere else for another bookshelf please so I'll try not to race through them but what can you do. Okay next up I have Golden Child by Claire Adam. Claire Adam is a Trinidadian author and this book is set in Trinidad. I, again it's been on my radar for a while but it won the Desmond Elliott Prize in 2019. Yeah I've heard amazing things. This again is about twins um as I said there was a bit of a twin theme in this book I love reading about twins and you're following the twin's father, Clyde. One of the twins goes missing and it says he sets out into the Trinidadian bush to try and discover what's happened. I think this is going to be really powerful and moving potentially, very absorbing already from the back of that. I'm like, I, I need to know. I, I need to know what, what happened to one of the twins. I think they're called Peter and Paul. Also, one of my favourite books I've read in the recent years is Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud, which is set in Trinidad and it was a joyful experience reading about Trinidad. I 
for obviously like very different books but again it wasn't somewhere I'd read about before and I found it fascinating so I uh, couldn't be more keen to read more um books set in Trinidad so yeah and like this sounds absolutely amazing can't believe you haven't read it yet last two um we have The Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston again a complete classic that has kind of passed me by I don't actually really know anything about this book it's set in America and as far as I know it's about a young girl who is married off to an older man and about her subsequent relationships and um, says so she finally meets the man of her dreams so yeah very excited i know people who have read this have absolutely loved it like it's one of their favorite books of all time uh, it's a classic for a reason you would imagine so very keen to get to that also this cover is stunning and it matches the spines of like all my Daphne Tabarnias. And then finally, we have Under the Udala Trees by Chinello Okparanta. What a stunning cover again. Um, this is another Nigerian book and it is said that in 1968, it says at the height of the Nigerian Civil War. And it's about a young girl coming to terms with her sexuality and her friendship with another girl against this political backdrop. So I'm obsessed with books about friendship, um, like intense, friendship books especially between two women obviously I don't know if this might end up being more of a romantic relationship than a friendship but I think it sounds amazing and I'm kind of in the mood to have like my heart broken a bit and to be really moved and to really feel things and immediately this is the vibes that it's giving me it says on the back utterly heartbreaking a triumph which yes that is what I want triumph over me break my heart please so yeah there are all the books I bought in my recent haul I genuinely like I need to pick these up for a thumbnail, but I'm not sure I have that power. Like I don't think I'm strong enough for that. Not gonna lie. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks so much for watching. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, hype me up even more if you want to read any of them. Obviously I'd love if you subscribed. My Instagram at Goodreads are linked down below, but other than that, I will see you in my next one. Bye.